And we are live tonight. Thank you for joining us. I got a panel group waiting in the wings, but I'm going to put you guys on hold while I make a couple announcements here, okay? You guys still hear me? We can yeah, hear you. Yes, sir. All right, man. So just a couple shameless plugs for a couple channels that I found this past week. It's Chad. It's Chad. Go check him out. I'm sure you'll love some of the interviews. Matter of fact, he interviewed our guest that is going to be here next week, Kurt Bozigian. So check him out. Another uh, channel that I found, Greatest Toys Ever Made. Greatest Toys Ever Made. You guys might like that one. And then finally, Toy Room of Insanity. This guy has 6.8K uh, viewers. So I don't think he needs our subscription, but I think it'd be nice to check him out. He's uh, one of my new subscribers, so I wanted to give him a shout out. Couple announcements before we get started with our show tonight. 12 June, next Monday, our special guest, like I said, is going to be Kirk Bozigian, aka Law from Law and Order from the A Real American Heroes line. He was the product manager at Hasbro from 1978 to 1996. He is a professor at Providence College in Rhode Island, and his newest adventure is Operation Recall. So do a little research this week and check out our show next week with Professor Kirk. Professor Kurt next week. Tonight's show, we have a special guest, Robert E. Soul, formerly from New Jersey, but now he is a rebel from Virginia. Thank you. AKA Soul Crusher Graphics on Facebook, AKA Deceptive Creep on Instagram. He's an illustrator and publisher, author of three books and three more coming on the way with his newest one is Jersey Devils, which is coming out this summer. He's also a toy collector and a toy photographer on Flickr. So if you want to check out some of his photographs of G.I. Joe's that he did in the past. Make sure you check that out. Quick thank you to three people that subscribed to my channel this past week. Toy Room of Insanity, like I said earlier. Bill's War Game World. If you're into war gaming, check out Bill's War Game World. He also has a uh, YouTube channel. And Jim's Toy Box. Thank you, Jim, for subscribing. So I'm going to turn on the chats real quick and let's see who's out there. I'm betting Big Boss Jack is with us. Phil Mahalik is out there. I see that. All right, so are we ready for some introductions? This is what everybody waits for. Oh my! Let's see. Let's see who should I pull up first tonight. Well, Jim, you were in here first. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with you tonight. All right. All right. Here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready, Jim? <laughs> Never. Are you sitting down, brother? Are you Jim down? shaved for the occasion, so he's all set. <laughs> here we go. My first introduction tonight. This man has been on the run ever since he broke out of juvenile detention center in 1978. <laughs> He was a member of the Russian mafia until they said he was too much to handle. <laughs> His motto is keep your friends close and your enemies closer. This is Mr. Jim Egner. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Glad That's to be great. here. Join us tonight, bro. Thank you. Ah, thank you. It's always nice to have somebody from Texas in the house. Let's bring up this guy next. You were next to Jay on in tonight. How you doing, brother? Well, very well, thank you. The, I got one for you, too. Is... You know that, right? <laughs> What's that? I said, you know, I got a new one for you, too, right? No, oh, great. I always, <laughs> yeah, like I said, we do look forward to these. I know. Uh, I'm waiting for having, a, you know, a, a, have them all together so that we can that we can reminisce about all our wonderful uh, intros. <laughs> <laughs> Need to come up one for Paul there. Oh, yes. Oh, and yeah, it's going to be they, a good one. Yeah. It'll yeah. Be epic. All right, Paul, where'd you go? Did Paul just oh, disappear? That's the, the first. <laughs> wow, he was glitching out. I guess we're going to have to run the show for him. Oh, no. Hey, and if you can't. Yeah. Well, it's all you now. I know. If you can't change or switch the camera, you just got to look <laughs> at my ugly mug. The inmates are you. running to the asylum. Yes. <laughs> Keep you got to love when that happens. Keep talking. <laughs> oh no, someone someone better get a hold of them because I don't know if we're all gonna have to like log off and log back into another uh, link. I'm waiting for a frantic text from Paul. Oh, he's gotta be freaking out. He's gotta be freaking out. <laughs> maybe uh maybe one of his Joes fell off his shelf in his garage. Yeah. <laughs> panic the Alamo There's the Alamo, Alamo table yeah. <laughs> over. So what it was it was that Alamo table. We got Sergeant Soldier James Peacock's in the house. All righty. Hey, <clears throat> yeah, Jimbo didn't like that. My my introduction. I got to bust on him a little bit. He uh -oh. didn't like. He said my intro to. I, I was trying to 
put something on face on the YouTube. I'm never on there. I, I need to get, I only got 107 people who subscribe. I'm trying to get more, but I'm never on there enough. So I says, oh, let me put a couple little things on there. I had built a really cool uh, diorama using uh, insulation foam. Mm -hmm. and, and insulation foam, if you guys ever use insulation foam, it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. It sticks to everything. Well, I took it and I made a, a little cardboard box and I took the insulation foam and I sprayed it all in the inside of the box, waited till it hardened, shaped it up a little bit, spray painted it. And oh, there he is. He's hey. well, hello, sir. Can we were all set. We I were all no set idea. to take over. I no idea what happened, man. I was we were all set to take over the show. Dude, I was looking at the black yeah, screen. Just you took over. I thought you were going to come back on the screen in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so what are we talking about? Fill me well, in. we were talking about the diorama that I built that I, that uh, Sergeant Soldier was busting my stones because he said the intro to my YouTube was longer than the actual clip of the diorama. <laughs> and I said, yo, Jim, I said, you know, I, I said I had to have that intro so people could see all the crazy other things I do. But actually, I was just trying to have it. it was it was just something quick that I wanted out there. I wanted people to see that diorama. It's been sitting around for a long time, um, but I thought it was really cool. And I said I use that spray in, uh, spray foam insulation, which is really sticky and it's a nightmare. But when it hardens, it really makes a, it it swells up and it makes a really really cool pattern. So I, if you haven't seen it, just check it out. It's like fifty three seconds. Yes, Jim. <laughs> it's long. The intro is about forty seconds. And I think we get about 13 seconds of the actual diorama. Have you uh, have you seen the intro to Largo's Lair? Everyone, he's done, he does a trailer for everybody who comes on there. It is. That's pretty slick. <laughs> it's wild. Pretty wow. slick. Yeah. Yeah. High production so, value. Yeah. Yeah, he's 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 fun. He's a lot of fun. Hey, Paul, you're real pixelated looking. Can you hear us, Paul? <laughs> you look an orange. You running for president? <laughs> <laughs> My internet is in and out. Uh oh, oh he's yeah, lost him again. Hey, at least left the four of us up. <laughs> yeah, All right, he's got to open right, up so the garage door. Gonna... Can you guys even hear me? Yeah, I can I hear, hear you. you. I can hear yeah, you. Yeah. Now. That's what you get about talking. Get the orange circle. The orange circle from you. Uh, uh, keeps saying I'm losing connection, but I'm right next to the, the connection's fine. I don't know what's going on. You got your Jeff pants on? The round circle was your head. I do, I do have my pants on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll just put the guest in here and let you guys interview him. And I'll <laughs> we don't have the control button. Oh, no, we'll just be sitting there like oh, wait. The yeah. Hollywood Squares. I, know, right? I mean, this is show number 18 or 19, and I've never had a problem. And now all of a sudden, I got a problem. That's what you get for telling me to practice with Austin. Well, I was talking yeah. bad about the chupacabra <laughs> and the Bigfoot and all that shit. Maybe it's coming back <laughs> to haunt me now. <laughs> uh. All right, where do we leave off? What are you guys talking well, about? I was, really I was waiting the intro for Angelo. I was waiting Angelo, for that did intro. Did you do your intro for yourself, or you want me to? Do I, I kind of did, but all right. <laughs> Jeff, do you want an intro? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. At this point in time, we just might as well just stick with what we got in case you disappear. <laughs> Uh no, I, I wrote up a good one for you because I was thinking of eBay when I thought of you, bro. <laughs> oh, Jesus. He didn't become an asshole overnight. It took, <laughs> year, it took years for people on eBay sniping him at the last minute for toys. <laughs> so stop pissing him off and be an idiot, you eBay pricks, because oh. this is Jeff Shear. Wow. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> we got to start watching the rating on this thing. Bay. I know you hate <laughs> Evil Bay, bro. He's not, Paul doesn't care about ratings now. No, hell no. I can give a shit. <laughs> I got no, I got no sponsors. I got, I don't I got even nothing. care anymore either. Well, you I know? was going for the, the PG 13. I thought you were, you know, I thought he was moving up in that rating scale. Nah. So since we're starting to use some vulgar yeah. language, like, like those guys from New York do, we're, we're dropping the F bomb tonight, baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> might do well, that, that, that's Robert. Robert, Robert's got a foul mouth. I heard Robert does have a foul mouth. Let's see. <laughs> let's see what I got on. Robert. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we saw, we saw that. That's so awesome, man. Right. I love that. This man will open a can of whoop ass on anyone who touches his GI Joe collection. He's known from coast to coast like butter on toast. He's the old guy, but he's not as old as Tom Hansen. 
He is the real gray ghost, and that's the bottom line because he said so. This is Robert DeCastro. Woo! Woo! <laughs> and we'll just oh, leave it like that in case my internet goes out again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to fuck up anything else anymore tonight. Man. Okay. So you did hear who the guest was next week, yeah? Yes, we did. Yep. So I think you guys might be fighting for space on there because I know Robert, you have to be here. Uh, Robert, yeah, you Robert know, was you my know uh, connection, well, don't you? Huh? Robert was the you connection here. Well, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We worked together on a project or two. Yeah. 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 So between yeah, the rest yeah. of you guys, between the rest of the AOA, I think we ought to have a battle royale or something like that to, <laughs> to see who gets the next slots. The what do you think? Virtual <laughs> virtual arm wrestling, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jim, before I lose internet connection again, what's new in the zoo for you, buddy? Oh man, I got a whole grocery list of stuff. If you got about that's what, five that's what we want to hear, man. Go get yeah. it. I've uh, yeah, been trying to get ready for the uh for the DFW show, so I've been working on a few few things. One of them are the Cooley hats, you know, yes. uh, oh. that was uh, something Greg Brown asked me to do up for him. So I did. Oh, yeah. Those. So that was kind of fun. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 That's, That's from the space. You know what space. that is? Yeah. Yep. From the space set. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if y'all know. I don't do much uh, three and three quarter Joe stuff. Anybody recognize what this is? Yeah. Is that the radar dish for one of the uh, little mechanical deals? Yeah, I think so. Yep. Somebody asked me, hey, can you redo one of those? And I said, sure. That's actually printed in resin. So Yeah, it looks good. The quality of that one came out. They're so oh, small. Wow. Uh, let's see. I got another one here. Let's see. Anybody could whoop. Bipod. Yeah, bipod. Yeah, yeah, for the M60. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the, the Russian. Is that for the Russian one? Uh, this is another request. Oop. Handlebars for the yeah, motorcycle? Yeah. Yeah, that's the Irwin motorcycle handle. Oh, for the Irwin. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is going to be a, a one that's going to really mystify y'all. Anybody, anybody have any idea on this one? Hold that up some more. Is that from the space matic No, this is actually Evil Knievel stunt ramp. Oh, oh. Tom Hansen's probably. Tom, I was going to say, Tom Hansen needs that. Yeah, Pop and wood. Um, got one of these. Oh, yeah, laser. Uh, Oh yeah, it's got the the silver Sonic. power pack. The Sonic, Sonic the rescue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. Solar uh, communicator. Yes, yeah, that's from the uh, the tracker. I'm, I'm yeah. backwards here. It's a radar dish stand in the solar. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm running out of time. Uh, the snare. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah, got the snare. Oh, it's working too. Yeah, it's working snare. Uh, and then I guess. Uh, uh, Russian ammo cans and lids. Oh, yeah. So, like I say, I've been working on a lot of small things. And then the the mast for the sail car. That's oh, cool. Uh -oh. So, anyway. That's it, fellas. That's that's, that's what's new that's in my zoo. Plenty. Wow. So, Jim, <laughs> zoo. Jim before I go into the zoo, because, well, my zoo is a little, yeah, kind of lame this week. But, anyway, Jim. How many of those different items do you usually bring when you go to a show? Uh, this is my first show, so I'm trying to bring, I don't know, five of pretty much everything that I do. So I got about you're gonna, you'll sell out. Things. You'll sell out, and then uh, will you have to, like, uh, take orders and whatnot? Yeah, I guess <laughs> I hope to sell out, but I really don't. I have no idea how this Oh, yeah, you will. Go. Yeah, definitely. If you're only bringing that few uh, number, you'll definitely – You'll definitely get people to, to purchase those items. That's great. Um, are you going to Jolana or are you just going to uh, Dallas? And Really going to depend on how Dallas goes, to be honest. Okay. I mean, I'm basically, if Dallas goes really well and I sell out, like you say, yeah. um, <clears throat> my guess is that'll fund, you know, no, the next show. So that's Perfect. how it has to work for me. I just don't have the extra income there to, to fund it myself so ditto yes absolutely um well as far as my zoo like i said um i would i was sick for probably it was almost a, a month i mean i battled this cough and whatnot for almost a month my wife took off she went to italy for 14 days she just came back she came back she got covid she's been knocked out with covid she just tested negative for the first time so um it's it's been like a, a sick household here and then trying to deal with the end of the school year 
with all the things that happen at school, um, it's kind of taken a little bit of time away from the one six scale. Uh, when, once school's over, I'm going to go full tilt into that after I uh, do a little project in the basement that needs to be done. Got to put a new sump pump in and whatnot. But I've been trying to get onto YouTube a little bit. I, I don't go on there enough, but I tried to post a new little uh, a diorama I had built. If anyone uh, has an opportunity to take a look at it, it's very short, but it's a cool little diorama that I made using some spray foam insulation. Uh, so that's been going on. Um, other than that, it, it's been kind of quiet. I'm trying to get some comics together for the Joe Lanta show. And I know that um, with the Kickstarter that's going on, I did uh, offer to put some of my comics up as part of the Kickstarter. And I know, Jim, that you have something that you are also uh, donating to that. Yeah, I'm doing a, uh, <clears throat> I guess I probably should have mentioned that. It's the um, equipment tester uh, set that I do. Uh, doing them in a Super Joe Orange is yes. cool. kind of the exclusive. So yeah. Nice. Your turn, brother. What's in new in the zoo? Well, if you guys watched my... Uh, Video Had a lot of stuff posting a couple days ago. I went to an auction on Saturday and stood there for three hours and got a giant haul of GI Joe stuff as well as some uh, Hot Wheels oh, yeah. and some model rocket stuff. All that, uh, yeah, it was exciting. Uh, just finished up a photo story. Uh, I got two more in the works. One of them's Adam and I's photo story. I got a lot of other projects going on trying to book videos out for the next few months. If I can find the time, got a bunch of customs I'm working on, uh, trying to network uh, a bunch of different projects all at once. I also have a thing I'm trying to get done for uh, the Super Joe Kickstarter. I'm probably just going to, I had some choices to make, but what I wanted to do, I think I'll just do like a, a hand sewn outfit and a, a, a rifle in a case maybe. Uh, so that's what I got going on. Other than that, man, just been like super wicked busy. Busy's better than being bored. Yeah. And I also checked out uh, Roberto at Monster Palooza, and I was jealous of him. I, I love that yeah. rotten roly. Speaking of which, here he is, yep. Robert, all the way from yep. Vegas. How was your trip, man? Good, man. It was wow. I gotta say, I was. My mind was blown. There's so many cool stuff in Monster Palooza. Oh. And of course, I, I adopted my new child. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. He keeps up. He keeps us up, uh, up at night. Oh, I bet he does. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, as far as GI Joe stuff though, uh, I had to actually uh, put a lot of the projects off because of the show, but. Uh, now I'm back. I'm going to be doing up some outfits and uh, doing up some alien guys that's going to be popping up on uh, on the diorama soon. That, I'm actually doing like another section of that uh, ruined building. Got two more to do, and that should be done with that. That was a nice uh, diorama you had last time, man. That was cool. Very cool. Like, like that video. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah. Thanks. All right, we got to move it along quick. Uh, I do have a question for the panel. Do you still read or collect comics? Let's mm. go in reverse order. Yeah. I sure do, uh, but I don't actively, like, you know, go out uh, to buy. If, if, if I go to a shop, they have comics, I'll look through it. And uh, I'm usually just buying uh, vintage stuff, though, like uh, silver, golden age stuff. And that's about it. No particular uh, title. Uh, it could be horror. It could be superior <laughs> stuff. Mainly Jack Kirby and John Buscema stuff. So you're not trying to complete a collection or anything like that? Just to... No, I've got a lot. Uh, you know, yeah. I've got a list, but it's not that long, you know, because uh, the, the, the earlier you go with these artists, the, the higher the price goes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, how about you, man? Still reading, collecting? No? Uh Actually, right at the end of COVID, the comic book store I've been going to since 1982 shut down. So oh, when they dude. shut down, I quit collecting. So I collected from 82 uh, up until 2021, I believe, somewhere around then. Um, towards the end of it, a lot of the titles I just wasn't really into. The writers changed and 
it wasn't the stories just weren't very good anymore. So I actually don't do anything anymore. I'm uh, my goal is to catalog the comics that I have from '82 on up to now. One of these days. Check, sir. Oh, I'm next. Okay, I thought Angelo was going to be. Oh, the... Sorry, did I skip Angelo. We'll come back <laughs> yeah. to Angelo. He sits hey, so, <laughs> he's sitting you know, so low in his chair, I can never see him. I don't know if he's there. He's lower, lower, lower. I don't know if he was there or not. Hey, are you ready? That's your fault. Paul, you told me that my my Buddha in the background looked like it was sitting on my head. It did. It did. <laughs> I had an upside down ice hey. cream cone on my head. It did, man. So Paul complains moved, about everything. Don't listen I to him. I moved over a little bit so you can see it better and you can see the Brachiosaurus over there. But you can't see the high hide. It's hidden behind all the uh, all the messages. I got a high hide up there too. Are you gonna answer the question or what? <laughs> oh, the question. That's right. Stick to the topic. Damn it. All yeah. right. We got a guy. Um, hey, we got a guy in the green room. He's about ready to hang. All, yeah. like, all right. <laughs> the the comics I've been collected the, that I collect the most, and I will continue always to collect as long as they're still there. Is GI Joe. Uh, I have other ones, but I used to put up a. A display for a local comic book store. I would have a display there every season, and he used to hook me up with the comics for free. I haven't done that for about a year, uh, so I have to go and try to get some of the back comics that I don't have, but it is strictly G.I. Joe related. Check. All right, now to you, sir. Hey, well, I'm, I'm not a huge comic book collector. Uh, there was two that uh, was really of much interest to me. One, uh, Tarzan, believe it or not, from way back. Uh, stuff my mom actually collected when she was a little girl in the 50s. And the other was Star Wars, the original. Oh, from the original set. Star Wars, yeah. yeah. Fun stuff. I don't see them very often, either one of them. Yeah. So they're kind of few and far between. So we're a little late bringing in our guests, but uh, we can talk fast tonight, I'm sure. I'm not even going to waste my time with my introduction for you. You heard, Everybody heard it earlier. This is Robert Soul, as in Soul Hello. Graphics. Hey, buddy. Hello. Good evening. Dude, honor and a privilege to have you on. We've been trying to set this up for about Thank two you. weeks now, and uh, yeah. glad to finally get you on. So I was going to do a little spiel on your books and stuff, but, you know, it's probably better off uh, hearing it straight from you. I did need to apologize to you. Like I said earlier, I want to do it officially to these guys. Because uh, cool. I first found you on Flickr when I saw all your G.I. Joe pictures and G.I. Joe in the wild pictures, and they were cool, and that's why I brought you on. And and then you then you came on and said you were a writer and a publisher. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, man. I didn't know all that. I was just I was just bringing you on because I thought you were another G.I. Joe guy like the rest of us. So, uh, But I, I am honored to have you on our show, and uh, hopefully you can talk about your books. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for, thanks for having me. I, well, once you're a G.I. Joe guy, you're kind of always a G.I. Joe guy. I'm just – haven't been doing as many photos of them lately, but um, yeah, I, I was inspired to do GI Joe pictures from that book that came out a long time ago. I think it was called the Collectible GI Joe, and had like really great photographs of uh, GI Joe, really great dioramas of uh, the adventure team uh, Joes and the military Joes. Yeah. And so that, that that's kind of what got me um, got me into it. Right on. Um, and I was like really into it as a kid. Um, I actually have some of my books with me. Yeah, if you want to hold them up, absolutely. I will hold them up. Actually, let me do them in, in order. So that's the, the first one that I did. Um, this one's available out on Amazon. Shadow. It's the beginning of a series. Yeah. yeah. Shadow of um, Death. The Shadow of Death. Yes. You're going to have to read them because so, uh, it's a mirror image, bro. Gotcha, yeah. The Shadow of Death. There you go. And uh, so this is my main character here, uh, Matt Spike. He's a private investigator. Gets involved in weird shit. Like UFOs. Um, this is the uh, this one I held up uh, by accident earlier. This is um, Tales from a Dead End World. The Dead World. End World is in my uh, series. series. Yep. And um, this is like a short story collection, and it kind of happens between the first and the second <clears> book. <throat> and this one is uh, Beyond the Veil of Death. Death. And that's the uh, the sequel. And uh, involves all kinds of like astral projection, going into heaven and hell and Valhalla and all over the damn place. Wow. Um, and then I also brought some um, like short story collections that I have uh, stuff in. 
So this is one that's put out by my, my publisher, uh, Curious Corvid. And I have a story in here that eats up a ridiculous amount of pages in the book. Not really so much of a short story when it's like 70 pages. So Good uh, stuff. that's fun. This one technically is not out yet. This is supposed to officially come out. It's uh, called Horror Scope Volume 2. Wow. And it's all uh, horoscope themed uh, horror stories. Oh. And so I have I have one in here for tourists because I am a tourist, um, which is like a retelling of the uh, the legend of the the Minotaur and the labyrinth. Oh yeah. Um, but from the Minotaur's perspective. Huh. And, okay. uh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. So, so that's in there. This comes out um, officially June twentieth. Wow. But you know, I've got one. Actually, I've got about six other ones. Um, and I, I'll actually be selling those this uh, this weekend. There's a comic shop um in town that uh is letting me vent so uh, this saturday i'll be out there trying to sell copies of all that stuff right on man yeah should, rad stuff you should have been a monster palooza with those books man oh yeah that, that probably would have been awesome yeah i did i did a comic con um in february here we have one called big lick comic con big lick is what they call, used to call roanoke which is the city that i live in and um that's like the original name for it and uh, I, I did pretty well there. I actually sold a hell of a lot more books than I expected to. And I'm going to do it again in, in, uh, in August as well. So uh, so how long have you been writing? Uh, I mean, like, I started seriously getting back into it in, like, the tail end of 2019. And uh, put out my first book in um, 2021. Wow. And um, just had uh, two of them come out last year. And I'm going to have three coming out this year. Wow. So the uh, big one that comes out um, at the end of the month on June 30th is, is called Jersey Devils. Um, it's about a team of paranormal investigators. Um, they're, actually, they're actually in this book. The main characters are in this book. And this is like kind of how they first meet each other. Um, so it's kind of a sequel to the story that's in that book. Um, but they go out into the, the woods in New Jersey to uh, look for the Jersey Devil, which is the uh, the resident cryptid of the uh, state of New Jersey, which is where I'm from originally. And uh, I, I don't really believe in the actual Jersey Devil so much, um, but um, I've been obsessed with it all my life. When I was like a little kid, there was a book in the uh, uh, that I got from the library that was all about the Jersey Devil. And I was obsessed with that shit. I, I I would copy like the maps out of it. I go looking in my backyard, the Jersey Devil. Um, yeah, I was just like totally into it. So, in researching the book, I kind of like uh, did too much research, unconvinced myself of the existence of the Jersey Devil. But still, still an awesome character. So they go out into the woods uh, looking for him. They run into run and they handle. Um, they they don't find. Jersey Devils are looking for, they find a different type of creature. And then they have to come back later on and beat the crap out of that one with the real Jersey Devil. So it's lost, kind lost of a, a monster smackdown. Uh oh, oh Robert, Robert, we lost, we lost, your, lost picture, your picture. Man. Man. Oh. I don't know what happened. What happened. Am I still missing? You can no, still you're hear still me. There. We can hear you. Okay. Well, maybe it's better you can't see me anyway. Oh. <laughs> We're getting an echo, though. though. Oh. Hopefully my picture will come back at some point. Hey, uh, hey uh, Angelo. Angelo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, is there any uh, truth to this Jersey, Jersey Devil thing? thing? You're from New You're York. York. Yeah, yeah, I. You know, you know the, only the only thing is, thing is boy, this is, this is bad. Bad, 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 yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It happened to Robert Black. Black. It, 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 it started. It started when Robert got the picture. Let me uh, let me do this and see if it changes anything. Yeah, it did. It it did. Have, that's Robert's phone. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, so, can you, you get have, back? In, in touch weird. Weird. Been getting some text, text messages. messages. Yeah, might, that might have been what it is. Am I back? You on your phone, Robert? I'm not on the phone. Should I turn it off? I don't know uh, what you're what using, you're but we're getting a big echo when you do something. Well, let me try to turn it off. This is, this uh, is Murphy's, Murphy's Law tonight, tonight man. man. He just got to roll with it. 
Yeah, yeah we, no, uh, uh, Robert mentioned so, before X Files, <laughs> and and I know they did an episode. I, I'm pretty sure they did an episode with uh, the Jersey Devil, um, and that would be something that I remember. You know, watching that was always 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 awesome. So um, I, I know that I think he because he mentioned that and liking X Files and he mentioned Mulder and whatnot. Probably some of his ideas that he got were based on some of the uh, the TV show. I just was wondering to try to get a hold of him and ask him some questions in regards to how he went about uh, doing the actual publishing and getting the books actually uh, published in for sale. You know how you go about that whole process because I'm I'm not familiar with it. I would love to know how to do that if I eventually wanted to take some of the comics I did and 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 put them into story, uh, more of a novel or novella type and 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 try to publish those. Uh, but I think that I would love to find out more about that. I know there's a, I mentioned to Paul, How are you a gentleman. printing your comic book right now, Angelo? What's that, buddy? How are you, are you uh, printing your comic book through Kablam or something like that? The, the comics, uh, most of the ones I have now they went, they were um, eight and a half by 11. 11. Old. Old. They, were half, half the, they were half the size. And then um, the current ones are actually eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper um, that I just get printed full color on heavier stock paper. Okay. Um, and then I then I bind them all together myself. My father in law oh. made me a little like binding machine kind of thing where I get the, the cover pages like um, 12 by 18 that I have to cut off. Like I do all the work myself except for the printing. So it's a pain in the ass. So I have to cut the cover to fit. I have to make sure that I fold it the, the right amount. I put some glue on the binding. I put it in the little machine, you know, wow. tighten it all up. It's got to sit. So each one of the booklets that I made, the trade paperback ones that I'm doing now were the holiday base, the Halloween one I did, uh, Thanksgiving one and Christmas one. Those are all collections that are in excess 60, 70 pages each. Um, the ones prior to that, the ones that are the continuing series of G.I. Joe um, are – individual they're about 15 to 20 pages a piece that are not in that type of format that eventually i want to put in more of a trade paperback but i would love to like write it as a story maybe without the pictures um similar to what there's a gentleman named jim beard i believe his name is and he goes on uh, on amazon he has three books one just was released and it's like about the um uh, mummy's tomb kind of um uh, G.I. Joe. Each one is a G.I. Joe related and they have actual DC Jones. That, yeah. What's that? Did you see it? Yeah. D.C. Jones. D.C. Uh, Jones. And he has yeah. a series. He's up to three. Mm -hmm. And each one, the cover is actual Adventure Team G.I. Joe-esque. Yeah. Uh, and then wow. so, yeah. So if you yeah, check him out. Super cool. Yeah. I yeah. tried to email or text him to get in touch with us to get on the show. I, I, I think, oh, real quick, um, yeah. talking about self-publishing, uh, there's a website called lulu.com, and I had some experience with them a few years ago. I published a book there. Um, it's just one big PDF. So if you can create a PDF, you can upload it to Lulu, and they'll publish it. So, uh, what, really? what book did you publish? Did you write a story? Uh, it's something? Build Your Own Vacuform Machine. If you go to lulu.com. I guy. want a copy of that. Yeah, let me, let me, uh, let me check and make sure Robert's here. Robert's here. Robert's here. Hey Robert. hey Robert! Oh, cool. Log, log off. Log, log, log back log on. Back on. To text text All right. Yeah, that's Man. bad. Now, do they have? Now, when you say they publish it, do they actually then do the cover of the book? Like, I, I do they do the, yeah. really? Yeah. And if I don't, if you don't mind me asking, what do they? What do you usually have to spend per copy when they do um, something like that? It depends on how much profit you want to make. Yeah, I wasn't really after a whole lot, so I I published it pretty much at cost plus a couple of dollars. So okay. I think I'm selling it now for thirteen dollars and fifteen cents, and I think I make a couple of bucks. Yeah, of it because mine to do the to do the photocopies that I'm doing with the full color print. Yeah, it's expensive as hell. Yeah, and so even with with the ones that trade paperbacks that are about 60, 70 pages, if I don't charge twenty dollars, I'm not going to make. You know, like <laughs> wow, pennies. Yeah. No, um, yeah. because they're they're all full color prints. Uh, have you heard of Kablam? Though? What's have that? You of, have you heard of Kablam? Kablam, but I don't think they will do the size. Kablam, I think, is more. Um, is that more the comic they, book they do, size? They do comic book. They do manga. They do magazines uh, format, 
And if you want to do it like an anthology style where you have all your books all in one thick book, they can do that too. Kablam. Yeah, because I was familiar with that. I looked them up before and it just seemed like the price was was not reasonable compared to what I was looking for. Because it just seemed like because <clears throat> once I start putting things in full color and they're, mm -hmm. they're photographs, full color photographs, it then the price starts to bump up. And that's why it's so hard to keep the price down. That's why I started doing more and more online so people could actually see my comics because I wasn't getting that many people to purchase them. One of the just basic, I charge about $5 for one of the uh, 15 to 20 pagers and I, I wasn't getting enough of a following that way. So I started posting. I, I really want people to read them. I, they're, they're, I think they're fantastic stories. I put a lot of effort into them. Um, I, there's a lot, if you see, I've taken pictures everywhere and anywhere, um, you know, from the heat yeah. outside when it's 90 to the freezing temperatures when here in the great Northeast to right in the water of, you know, the state park where they're chasing me around with their dogs saying, get out of the water. God damn You're not supposed to, <laughs> you know, I have my chest waiters on. I'm in there. Oh, we hey, just Angela. all went out. We just went out. I just went there? total black. No, well, you're I can still, still here see on you. screen. Can Would you, you still hear me? me? Yeah, I see everybody. I wow. can see everybody. Now I can. Everything just went totally black. It must. Yeah, that's be. what happened to me. That's what happened to me earlier, man. I, th I think it's uh, like UFOs, man. I what the, the hell? Well, Chupacabra. I see everybody. <laughs> hey, Angelo. Uh, see when uh, Robert, Robert, Robert Robert checks, checks in, in, they all echo. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this is the this worst. worst? Freaking. Reset area, area fifty one. Hey, Robert. 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 Yes. I still got no picture from you, bro. But. Oh man. We can do it again. We can do it again. Yeah, we'll give it another shot someday. So, so sorry, sorry about, about that. that but you're, we'll do it again. Come on, Paul. I'll take the hit, man. Hey, Angelo. 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 That would happen to you when you did it. That's what was happening to me with my first camera. Yeah. Were you using your is camera? He doing or it phone? His, is he doing it off his cell phone though? No, he said he had his uh, iPad. iPad. Yeah. Uh, it was an iPad. I just muted it and unmuted it. Okay. okay. It sounds good right now. Right now. Yeah, well, we oh, got no picture. Nope. Nope. I still hear echo. If it's unmuted, you're gonna. gonna it's it's, it's a, a setting on that iPad. iPad. But that's weird that it worked for the first part of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you tested it. Robert, I'm yeah, going to put you in the green room again. If I see your picture come up, I'll bring you back in. I'm sorry, bro. Okay, it's fine. Well, I hate to do that. If you don't mind, I want to bore you for a few more minutes with uh, some of the comic stuff. So, yeah, hey, this just, is just one second there, Angelo. Go. I guess I'm Robert in the green room. If you can text us some questions or we can text or you can uh, respond in the text, that would be pretty handy. I know uh, Angelo was asking about. Uh, self-publishing so if you had some yeah he should be able to text right along with the chats with yeah. everybody else yep and angelo, then uh, at least we can at least we can interact that way i think that yeah. would angelo is going to ask you this yeah have you approached austin from power comics about maybe doing like one issue of something i i have him i'm i'm sending some to him so he can put them as part of the kickstarter uh -huh. so this set this this one here um this is the the feathered serpent it is it has some mayan and aztec Everything I do, there's going to be a, there's some history involved in it. A lot of it I bring from what I teach at school. I always try to incorporate into my stories. Um, when I talk to Austin, I I didn't really approach him and say, hey, how can I go about doing this for myself? I would love to do that and find out what he does. It seems like he has so many people that he um, has that's involved in his project and whatnot. Me, it's me, myself, and I, and the printer. You know, that mm -hmm. that's kind of it, um, and because I know if I try to go bigger and better, um, I wouldn't be able to I would make absolutely nothing unless there was a way for me to branch out and make this bigger and better. Then maybe I could make a couple bucks off it. But I, I should talk, talk to him. I will see him at Joe Lanta because he, he is going to be there um, and he's always on Messenger 
we're we're talking pr- quite a bit. But I know with that, um, with his project right now, he's super busy. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, but this one, Paul, can you can you put me on? Yep, yep. Hang on. That I can do. Thanks, brother. All right. So this one, this is a size. This is eight and a half by eleven, and oh. you can see that that's one of the De Simone boat that I got. Uh, that I t- converted into like an Amazon river boat. And yeah. the, so this is the inside cover. And that's how each page, that's at the Saratoga Park. And is that the boat that uh... this is a PBR boat that it used to be, but is now it became my Amazon river boat. Yeah. But is that the, the, the one that, um, what's his name made? De Simone. Yeah. De Simone. Oh, yeah. Simone. oh yep. yeah, yeah. Yeah. The green yep. one. Yeah. And you can see there's Joe's fishing. So all of these things were, you know, they're put together. It, it's a pretty, pretty detailed story. Um, it's just that this alone, this is 20 pages. So, well, it's not 20 pages, but back in front becomes 20 pages. And I charge five bucks for that. Damn. And so, some people jump on it, some that? don't. What's that? What's it cost to print that? It's a bargain. I know. That, see, that's what I'm saying because I'm like, if you look, and let me put it like at the very end, some of the pictures, this oh. is a full, okay, that's an eight and a half by 11 print. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so when you fold um, it, it's, uh, right. So Did you if guys you, get Robert's uh, message? Can you guys I see saw that? It briefly. I saw it briefly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you were going to like get that printed at Staples or somewhere, that's going to be like two bucks. Yeah. Or, but you know, so yeah. that that's what's hard. And but, so I'm getting it as cheap as possible. Now it's a little artsy. So I'm getting, I'm doing this as cheap as possible and five dollars for the whole booklet with the story and everything. It's just that not a not enough people, um, I, I, I know about it. That's why I've been trying to go to Joe shows, uh, to bring some of the stuff, um, get it out there. And now starting like with the YouTube and and showing them as a story. And then hopefully get that interest that their people want a hard copy and have it in their hand. The Joe show. Hey, Angelo. You yes. Uh, just real quick. Uh, I got a private message from Robert. It says I self published my first novel through Amazon. They have somewhat it's, called something called KDP, which allows you to do that. All my subsequent books are published through a small independent publisher called curious Corvid C O R V I D. Just awesome. Share that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Robert. And thank you, Jim, for, for checking that out for me. Um, yeah, I heard that Amazon, there's a lot of people that go through Amazon. I think that's how that Jim Beard goes through uh, Amazon for all of his publications. It's the only place I've seen them and um, on Kindle, like but going through Amazon to get the Kindle. Here's what Robert says. I self-published my first novel through yeah, Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So it popped up for you? Okay. It just popped up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. That's great. That's great. I was going to, um, now that I just said that, Robert, what about, do you ever th- think about uh, incorporating some of the G.I. Joe when you did your pictures and such of G.I. Joe with your dioramas and outside, and now you're kind of incorporating some of the uh, supernatural and like the X-File-esque? Have you ever tried thought about taking the two and melding them together? Uh, that's kind of what I'm doing with my uh, cryptid series. Uh, and I know like Adam does a little bit with that. Jeff does a little bit with that. And, you know, m- my my stories now, I have a whole cryptid series going on. Have you ever thought about taking your G.I. Joes and have them be the main characters of some of your stories um, to go along with w- the series that you have now? Maybe branching off because I know you have all your characters already set and you kind of got a path that you got going on. Have you ever thought about branching off a little bit with, with incorporating G.I. Joe into it? Is it this is is this is it for me or yeah. it's I'm sorry it's it's for Robert the the yeah, author he's, he's still the he's author. still texting in private messages okay if he logged into uh YouTube he could type along right where Phil Mahalik and everybody else is typing along yeah. too so see Jeff you got to get a couple of these comics for your son brother so let me say hi yeah. to people that were in the chats that I have we can play catch up till he uh, texts back in hey you got a, you got a special guest down there Jeff hey yeah, Ali. this is uh this is my uh, cohort can you say hi to everybody. Who's that guy? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like you, Jeff. He is. He's a hundred. You gotta put like a little me. beer suds on his tongue when he does that. <laughs> Bye. 
<laughs> Can you see that private message from him? Yes. It's so quick. It just pops in and out. It says, I haven't thought about doing Joes directly in the story. Uh, they're fictional characters in the world of my comics, like in real life. But okay. Gotcha. Hey, uh, Angelo. Yes, sir. Uh, if you go out to just for a point of reference, uh, so you, you can do this yourself, you can go out to lulu.com and there's a price guide at the top under pricing. There's a comic book option when you can tell it how many pages you want, if it's color or black and white interior, 70 pound coated stock, um, saddle stitched with a glossy front cover. And if it's a 20 pager, they're going to charge the cost $8.21. Yeah. And you see my 20 pager is what I'm charging five bucks. Yeah. And so, so but you do a lot of manual work that they would yeah. do automatically for you. Mark that up to 10 bucks. So you make a couple of bucks off. Of yeah. It. But I don't know. Like I'm having a hard time selling it for five. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> But look, yeah, but on Lulu and everybody that logs in, it's a market that, right. At that point. Well, yeah. That's what I got to do. I need, I need, like, I need a manager. I need a manager. I need someone <laughs> to take care of all that business. And my wife's always telling me that. She goes, yeah. "You got to do this." Yeah, and and I'm just well, like, and I'm bad with that. My Robert thing is, DeCastro's not doing anything. He can help you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's not doing anything at all. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. he's totally free. I got, yeah. I got all my minions. Right. Uh, just doing it for me. Hey, what is was that a not the, not that take this over? Was that a special edition one? Yeah, is uh he the that uh special paint? Uh, yeah, that guy from uh Rock Bottom Novelties. Uh, Aaron Lewis. Yeah, he painted yeah. two of two of these, yeah. and I got one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try to get him on a live stream sometime. Yeah. That'd be fun. I can't wait. You know, the there's a mask fest is in Indianapolis in August, I think. And they're all, all those guys are there. I, I thought about going, but I'm going to wait till Ollie gets a little bit older and we're going to go together. Yeah. Go I rock Phil Mahalik ask is the Jersey devil, an urban legend. Yep. Yes. I guess. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on who you ask. <laughs> yeah. If you ask Adam, you get a different story. Oh yeah. Yeah. Adam's <laughs> yeah. 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 That's his next photo story. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, man. Yeah. You don't want to, some of those, some of those cryptic guys, man. He said a rural legend. Get more fired like up. Man. Oh yeah. Yeah. You start so. trying to yeah. talk sense. You get a little crazy. Are you yeah, seeing no, his private right. chats that he's putting up? A rural yeah. legend. Yeah. <laughs> rural legend. Yeah. Suburban legend. <laughs> Well, we got yeah. Phil Mahalik still with us. He didn't drop us, even though the internet keeps going out. Debbie Wolford, she's a personal friend of mine. Actually, I think Debbie's the first female we've had on the show. Uh, no, Ooh. no. Phil Mahalik's uh, sister. Oh, that's right. Sister was on I there. forgot about Phil Mahalik's yep. sister. Yeah, yep. yeah. You're right. How you're right. dare you? And Brian, another personal friend of mine. Thanks for uh, chatting in tonight, even though our internet sucks in Virginia Beach tonight for some reason. Is there a storm there or something? Dude, it's no. Actually, it was hot today for the first time. Uh, might be why. Yeah, I don't know. It never rains here. I'm like Phil Mahalik. Just blame me. I'll take the hit. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, I created my own symbol that combines the adventure team with a symbol that is associated with cryptids. So I want, if Paul, if you could, I want to see, the only place I have it right now is on my phone. This symbol. Yeah. Oh, cool. It blends, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. It I'm blends sorry. the adventure team AT, and the rest of it is part of a cryptid symbol. Wow. So if you if you oh, were wow. if you were to type in cryptid symbols, you would see part of that. And what I did was I superimposed the two of them together, and then I deleted some of it so that you would still get the adventure team component, um, and then and have the cryptid one as well. So with my my cryptid series of comics. That is in the corner, like when I have my, my Joe comic, that's in the corner. Now the new series has all um, that that new symbol. Cool, man. So, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. And while I have my friend uh, Debbie watching us right now, she just bought me this last week. An yep. issue one. A nice framed one, yeah. Yeah. Nice. And I said, I said, how ironic that uh, Kirk's going to be on the show next week. And I got yeah. that, so. Yeah, now, Paul, that's hanging Paul, up in the man size, cave now. What size was that? Because I, I I missed it. The, was that the regular size or is that the the, ju the, the jumbo? It's like eleven. No, that's bigger. Yeah, it's than like eleven by fourteen, probably. Yeah, 11 by fourteen. 
yeah. I have that issue. I have actually that issue upstairs in my comic book collection. Yeah, big issue. Number yeah. one. Yeah. Number one. I, was, I remember seeing wow. that on the at the gro I bought, I bought it at a local grocery store. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> IGA. Got that off my Toys R Us back in the day. Yep. Yes. I still got all my GI Joe comics from when I was a kid. Yeah. Hey, I, I, let, 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 I hope that uh, we don't run into this when Kirk is on. You know, I was just thinking about that, man. Don't fucking jinx me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul, yeah. you're coming in better now. Like, Paul, you're super clear now. Yeah, you were you were a little glitchy in the beginning. Yeah, you're, pixelated. You, yeah, it, pixelated, and your volume oh, really? is off. Well, the minute I finish every show, I go on YouTube and I watch it again just to see all the. All the yeah. f bombs I dropped and everything else. So, Paul, is that the same room you usually do at dinner? Is that your only yeah. fans room? Dude, I'm in. I'm in the man cave garage, bro. It's <laughs> not your only fans. Alamo diorama up. No, I took that down, man. I was that, that might be for a month. You, you know, that that's not your only fans room, Paul. Am I what? That's not your only fans room. Yeah, well, that it doubles as that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what am I going to be on your live stream, man? I oh, seriously? You, well, you don't. Know, I can only do them on Nobody the asked me to man. go on their live stream. I asked yeah. everybody to go on mine, man. Oh, hey, no, we got about is. eight minutes left, and I still got to play the game that I was going to play last week and the week before. So now that Jeff's here, we still got to play this game because you're part of this one, Jeff. All right, let's do it. Well, what are you guys going to do about Austin? Are you guys having him on your uh, any of the Jeff, live He's streams? on Jeff's show next. I'm gonna try oh, to do so Wednesday, Wednesday the 7th. Paul says he's okay. got some internet problems, but I'm just going to I'm gonna free ball it and go in there. You, you can't have any more than I had tonight. Fuck. Yeah, right? <laughs> Maybe I was, not. I was mic dropping. I was like, screw it, I'm out of here, man. <laughs> you, guys, you, you guys seem to run the show pretty good when I was offline there. So. All right. Hey, got a lot we, of personalities we, here. We're all professionals, man. Oh, you know. I know. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> In about a couple of minutes, we'd be running around with like our heads on fire. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'd be so I was ready to see what toys I could bring out that I haven't showed yet. Yeah, no kidding. Jim could probably do a whole. But, but Jim could do the whole three D print probably. Yeah, no. Uh, this whole deal. Turn me loose. I'll drone on for hours. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, Jim, did you did you how how are you going along with that that that? Uh, adventure team bike that you're doing the russian uh mono bike oh the mono bike that's, I'm still that's the top secret one the oh top yeah secret sorry, one. sorry nah, nah, let's talk nah. about that one this <laughs> it's on. um you know i'm gonna reuse the the click track that i've used for the uh replacement uh troubleshooter uh tank tread so oh, cool. that'll give you an idea of scale yes so, so that's that's what I'm working on right now. I'm intrigued by that one. I can't wait for that one to come out. Dude. Hey, look who decided to pop in tonight. It's Adam. Mm. G.I. Joe, The Lost Chronicles. He's got uh, a photo he story he's working on right now, man. We got to get that thing done by Christmas. You know, I didn't see Big Boss Jack on here at all. I, I'm a little worried, man. That's I'm worrisome. Worried. Yeah, that's not good. That's why everything went all glitchy. <laughs> boss jack he uh, like he like keeps everything in in, in perspective and, yeah. and keeps it all ro rotating right. <laughs> no, right i think he didn't tell his other uh cellmates tonight to uh <laughs> to chime in <laughs> all right i got about five minutes you ready to play the game all Let's right what's the game bro? we are playing jeopardy tonight gentlemen jeopardy everybody knows the rules of jeopardy uh, yes. you gotta ask a question Okay. I'll ask the question. You got to respond. Oh man! So it's, oh, it's Jeopardy for the Gen X group. Gen X. So these are all Gen X questions. Yeah, that's right. We're the best. And all they are is a single, with the exception of one question, the first one. All of them are single words used in the '80s during the Gen X generation. Do we have to say what is? It is a Jeopardy. Yep. Only be is one it? word. You only answer one word. Yeah. Well, well, and that's not a true Jeopardy end then. <laughs> This is my Jeopardy tonight. This oh, is my Jeopardy. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with uh, Jim Egner. Ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> this word means they are overrating or way too stressed. Hyper. What is? <laughs> no. <laughs> Ever had a friend totally wig out on you? Maybe you told them to take a blank blank. Chill pill. Chill pill is the word. Yeah. Very good. And Jim oh, is up. Is a chill One pill. to nothing. One <laughs> to nothing, Jim. Who's from, who's closest to California? I guess. Uh, Probably Robert. Yeah, Robert. Let's go with Robert on this next one. I'll, I'll give you. A, originally used in California surfers world, this word's meaning is slang for intense or awesome, as in that party was totally 
blank. What is rad? No. Can Nor- I chime in? Can I chime in? Yeah. yeah. Somebody just said it, I think. Say it. Gnarly. Gnarly. Yep. Gnarly. Jim, Jim said it first. Jim said it first. Jim, Jim two, two, to two to nothing. Two to nothing. I use that a lot. I was going with both. Robert said tubular. <laughs> that, that, was, that was a good one. <laughs> tubular. Uh, let's go with G.I. Joe A.T. Entering the language. Uh, uh, yeah. Entering the language around 1980 to 85. A blank is someone who loves heavy metal music. Heavy metal musicians and their fans came to be known for this, and an MTV had a show based on this word. Headbangers Ball, baby. Headbanger. Very good, man. Why did you give that to me? <laughs> uh, you get the, you get, I saved the last one for you. You got to wait for that one. All right, here we go. Jeff, you're up. We define blank as a young, ambitious, and well-educated city dweller who has a professional job. Yuppie. Yuppie. Nice. I get we're back to Jim, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. paying attention. So you're already up two to two to one. <laughs> I know, man. To I blank someone yeah. is to insult them, to treat them with disrespect. It is credited to the black slang in the 1980s and is very much still in use today. What it is can be spelled this? two different ways. What is this? This you are correct, sir. Wow. Three to one to one, zero. <laughs> Brian, this man. <laughs> Who's up? Robert. Guess, Robert. Oh, Robert. Oh, you got another California word. Here we go. Oh shit! This is the only one I never <laughs> used. As a, this is the only one I never used as a kid, right here. <laughs> this word comes from California and from the Bay Area specifically. Blank is a versatile word. It can be an adverb meaning very extremely, as in that pizza is. Blank good, or it can be used as an adjective, meaning many much, as in we ate blank pizza last night. This was a hard one. I, I didn't. I never used this word, so I don't. Fuck mad? Friend, I, yeah, is is mad? we ate mad pizza last night. No. Nah. Jim, no. Uh, you know, bitching was the one that came to my mind, but no. Yeah, that doesn't fit. No. Angelo. No, read read uh, read your first example again. Blank is a versatile word. It can be an adverb meaning very extremely, as in that pizza is blank good. Freaking hella, hello, hello, good, L-L-A. really. Yeah, uh, that's the only one I didn't know on this one. Uh, it's made up. I'm a <laughs> fake news. <laughs> fake news. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who's up? Yep, in the middle. Uh, I think uh, Angelo. Yeah. Yeah. Angelo, we're back to you. Yeah. All right. If someone says you're blank, that means you're acting like a fool and you're being too excited that you're too bothered or something. I'm not blanking over that mess that happened last night. Oh. Oh, spazzing. Mm, no. Mm. I got it. Tripping. Oh, Ange- Angelo's nope. up. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go, ahead, Jeff. What, sorry. Jeff, what you... Go ahead, Jeff. Tripping? Nope. I'm tripping. tripping. I'm not tripping. tripping. I'm not tripping, tripping. tripping over that mess. <laughs> Y'all tripping. <laughs> Y'all All right. Tripping. Robert, I think you're up. No? Oh, crap. Okay. <laughs> we only have three left. Bear with me, man. Oh, it's, man. It's nine o'clock. This ain't my thing, man. <laughs> You're tripping, Robert. You're tripping, <laughs> You're tripping all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this one is another nod to the music that enriched the lives of a generation X. If a friend tells you that you blank, take it as a compliment because it means you're absolutely awesome. Bad? Bad? No. That was a good guess, though. You blank. You You rock? You rock. Yes, sir. You, you rock. rock. I finally got one. Woo. <laughs> Jeff, I think you're up. Guys, hit me up. Blank is actually recorded in the late 1800s. It originally meant a man excessively concerned with his clothes, grooming, and manners, perhaps a kind of hipster of the day. Nowadays, the word blank spread as slang for a man in the U.S. 
example, blank. That's awesome. Dude. Dude is correct. Dude. Dude is correct. All right. Who wants the last one? Who Give it to Big one? Jim. Is this a tiebreaker? Give it to Jim. Give it Jim, to Big Jim. Up. The word oh. blank used as an adjective is an extremely positive slang description, but used as a noun is a reference to drugs. The AOA president uses this word quite excessively. Psychedelic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you ever watched the AOA's president's videos? <laughs> he says it in every one of his videos, man. <laughs> Oh, crap. Uh, Jeff, you don't even know what the word is, do you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to let everybody else guess before I <laughs> take it over. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shit is not a drug. Shit is not a drug. Yeah, well, yeah it kind of is. And it's, oh, I was waiting for somebody. If to you're watching Cheech here. and Chong, Honor minute. Guard I DC said dude, but that, that was I got to go back. I got to go back to Jim. I got to go back to Jim. I got I got I got to defend Jim because he said shit could be a drug if you watch Cheech and Chong <laughs> when he follows around the Great Dane for how many days? They got to roll it and smoke it. <laughs> so technically shit is a drug. <laughs> Phil Maholic's laughing his ass off, but you got to do a guess, Phil Maholic. Oh man. The word blank used as an adjective is an extremely positive slang description, but used as a noun is a reference to a drug. Are you ready? No. There's still people texting in, chatting in. <laughs> oh, we got everybody's playing? Well, yeah. Well, 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 if you know, put it Adam, in. Adam had tripping right. He was right on that one. Phil Mahal. Give us a first letter. Give us a Jeff. Give us a hint. Is it wicked? D. No, that, that's only D. the New Englanders say wicked, man. It begins with a D. It begins with a D. You are correct. This guy says it sometimes, and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, 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 really? no, 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 no. He's got his crash helmet on. <laughs> he does. He, <laughs> we can go into that story later on. <laughs> oh, man, come you on, come on. You don't have a guess? Are you guys ready for the answer? Yeah. I'm I'm ready. Ready. Chat I'm, I'm, I figure somebody would chat in the answer. Nope. But. Adam uses it sometimes. I know yeah, he does. Videos. Actually, yeah, Adam uses I it. I had a coworker. I say it at work all the time, and I had a Dang. coworker say it the other day, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" That's my word. <laughs> I know Adam says "dang" or "damn" all the time. Yep. Uh, God dang it! It's nine oh three. You ready? Give it to him, and we'll say good night because this That's is this dope. was a train wreck. This tonight. is this is oh, love this, this, is this live dope. stream's been dope. Dope, 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 baby. Dope, dope. dope. Now dope, Adam got it in dope. Dang it. <laughs> hey, uh, I want to thank everybody that stayed with us after I lost the internet. I want to apologize to our guest, special guests. Hopefully he'll come back on. and uh, Yeah, we'll bring him back on. Bring him back Glad on. And uh, I, I pray to the uh, internet gods that this does not happen next week with our special guest. It Kurt. won't. B Today's Bozigian, been a funky day, so. man. Yeah. You guys have a good night. I appreciate it. Thanks for sticking that out. Good to see all you guys. I can't wait to chat with yeah, all you guys soon about all hey, your endeavors. Jeff, Angelo, Jim. Absolutely, guys. Yep. Rock on. Well, have a good evening. Enjoy.